Hi, I'm George. We're going to improve the image here by changing that background to be more interesting. Just like that. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link right down there in the description. Okay, first thing we need is to find that background image. That's right here. And I found that over at my favorite image site. Let me bring that up. And it's right here at pixabay.com. Now, that kind of image is called a bokeh image. So I'm just going to type that in right here. There we go. And I'll set this for photos. That's what I want. And there it is right there at the beginning. You can see the look here is this kind of a soft focus, out of focus look, but these dots have hard edges to them. You see it right down here. You see it over in here and right over in here. And over here, it's a very popular look. Works really nicely for lights in the background. That's not quite as pronounced, but it's the same basic idea. Here's one just outside of a rainy window. Okay, so to download one of these from the site, just click on the image. And here you can do a free download. And then I chose 1920 by 1280, which is the right size for the image that I want a new background for. Then just choose Download. Okay, so we have our background image. Let's now go back to Photoshop Elements. And I'll delete these two layers and get us back to the basic single image, which is right here. Okay, now the first thing I always do whenever I'm working on an image like this, let me just put this to fit screen, is I make a copy of the background, right click and duplicate layer. It's not actually needed in this particular project because we'll be getting another duplicate layer anyway, but it's just a habit of mine to always do that. Okay, now we want to remove the background in here and notice how it has this very soft edge around that area like that. Normally on something which should be a hard edge, I'll just use the polygonal lasso tool right down here, take my time and do a nice selection, but that gives me a hard edge selection. This one is kind of soft up here and it's very soft down here and it's very soft right over in here. So this actually is better done if we do this using a different tool using the refine edge. This back to fit on screen, there it is. And for that, I like using the standard lasso tool. Make sure it's set here at new and I have my feathering set at one pixel. And then make a selection just outside of the edge of that hat. You don't want to be up against the edge. You don't want to be too far out, just fairly close. It doesn't need to be careful at all. It's just, just outside like that. Now you can go outside of the bottom, outside the picture, come back up in here for that little bit right here. And get outside the picture here, it makes it real fast on those edges. And then back in again, just staying in kind of close on that edge. There we go. And outside up here, and then right back to the beginning, and there's our basic selection. Now the trick to keeping those soft edges is to use the refine edge, and it gives us our tool right in here. I'm going to put my radius at one pixel, that just helps a little bit for that soft edge. I'll leave everything else alone, and the brush size is right down here. Right now it's 35, and that looks pretty good for this. I think that's a pretty good brush size. And I'll start up here at the top and then just brush right along that edge. Now I'm using kind of a pink look in there. It makes it real easy to see where that is. That is over here on the view. That's the overlay mode. It puts a red overlay, which is a bit transparent, but it's real easy then for me to see where that mask is as I'm painting in. Now this may take a little bit of touch up after this one step, and that's fine. We'll do some touch up on the layer mask once we have this finished. And then come in here, just do little short strokes. And the nice thing about this is it will give us a bit of a soft edge right along that edge. We're going to harden that up just a bit, but it keeps the soft edge effect. It's not going to be a hard, hard edge like we would have had with the polygonal lasso tool. Now, if it does this in here, but it doesn't quite catch that, we can fix that again later when we fix the edge. Okay, let's just get the rest of this completed in here. And this work is right along that edge like that. Again, this little short moves usually works out the best. Okay, once that's done, over here we're going to output this to new layer with the layer mask. Choose OK. Here's our new layer. There's the layer mask. And let's go ahead and fix this spot right down here. Now we'll do this on the layer mask side. So click over here. Look for that light blue outline. Make sure you see that. And then let's zoom in. Now with this tool, and on the layer mask, black hides and white shows. So I want to hide this, so I'll do that with a black paintbrush. My black brush, it's a bit too large. 
I want a soft edge brush, and that's a small soft edge brush, so I'll just scroll down here. 13, let's try. 17 looks pretty good. And I'm just going to freehand this. So just come in here and just carefully do a little freehand right along that edge. There we go. And just paint out everything you don't want to have shown. And we'll clean it up. There we go. And that is perfect. All right, let's go back to fit on screen. So that's done. Now look along the edge. You can see right here, it's kind of a bit of a fogginess showing right in there. You can see that pretty well here. For that, I'm going to increase the contrast right in that zone. And that's this tool here. It is the burn tool. I have mine set for mid-tones. And the brush size is at 59. It could be, you know, 60. Anything around there is good. Just take a look at the brush size on the screen and see if it's good for your use. Make sure you're still on the layer mask side. And I have my exposure here set at 50%. And then just brush over here several times and just see that kind of fuzziness go away. And just work around any place where it looks a little bit weird. Just come in and do that. Just get rid of that ghosting out there. That's going to blend into the background also. So this is really not going to be that apparent. But it's a nice step to come in and just clean things up. Now you can move the image around by holding the space bar down. A little hand icon right there. And put your image around and then back to work like this. There we go. And I'll just check all these edges. Make sure that we're good clear around. There we go. And around this side. And here I'm fine because of how I did that one. Let's check the other side of the hat. Looks okay, but I'll touch it up anyway just in case. Notice how it has kept that soft edge though. That's why I wanted to use that refine edge tool. All right. Back to fit screen. Let's now change the background in here. So come down just one layer and then let's open up that other image. I already have mine open, so mine is in my recent files list right here. If you don't have it in the recent files list, you just go to open and then find that file. Okay, recent file list and here's the bokeh image. Lots of ways of bringing your image in. This is my personal favorite. I have it at floating windows. If you don't have that, go up to edit, come down to preferences and general. And make sure this checkbox right here is checked. If that's checked, the image comes in as a floating window. Then all you have to do is just grab the background layer, drag it over here, and let go, and it's right in your image. And then I'll position it where I want it, which is about like that. That's a little bit short, as you can see here. So I'm going to grab the bottom right-hand corner, and I'll pull it diagonally down until that image fits the background and choose OK. I can then actually move it around a bit if I want to, but I think that side is the best, like that bright bit right in there. And there we go. There's a nice quick and easy background change with keeping that soft edge, that nice kind of soft edge in there. I like how that works out. So keeping a soft edge. And I felt that that pink color really helped to accentuate the warmth inside of the model's face here. Let me just show you that before and after. There's a before. Here's the after. She looks a lot warmer with that warmer background. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, and make sure you take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.